Hello students, welcome to Law Excellence YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about daily news analysis as well as deep editorial analysis as well. So before we are moving into detailed newspaper, first we would like to discuss about so the personality of the day as usually. In this, you can see Raju Yadu IAS. So this honorable IAS officer is very popular for his initiatives in the area of South Sikkim. In the area of South Sikkim, he is very popular for his initiative. What kind of initiative he took? Basically, these villages, the South Sikkim villages, they were facing with problem of, you know, like power supply, I mean, irregular power supply and lack of government school teachers and lack of development. So overall, we can say that there is a lack of certain kind of, you know, like social infrastructure. There is a lack of social infrastructure is there. So, social infrastructure is not there. From, you know, like from 2014, while he was appointed as South Sikkim District Magistrate, he launched the District Administrative Adapted Village. That means the scheme name is DAAV. DAAV. This kind of initiative, so adapting in this initiative, they'll adapt and they will develop, develop the villages. We can say that this model is a type of a good example for the inclusive growth good example for inclusive growth so this is about our personality of the day students second we are going to discuss about editorial analysis in the editorial analysis we are going to discuss about the first one is regarding the racial discrimination so racial discrimination in usa in that in that you know like context we will discuss so what in our our essence in this article is all about what we can learn from history so for example, you know, for example, in, in examination point of view, you can expect that, you know, like, so what kind of reforms do you think in American police reforms can help a better life to, you know, like black people or else how, what kind of reforms are required to met out, to prohibit the, prevent the discrimination against the black people. So you can frame in this context, you can expect the question. So the in syllabus, this is related to so paper two policies of developer and develop, developing countries on India's interest. So the issue is how the Lyndon B. Johnson actually he was a former U.S. president. How his policies are still relevant in addressing the racism problem of you know like United States. So now in this lesson plan we are going to discuss about so first so what has happened in USA. Recently, you know the students, there was a racial killing. Racial killing happened with respect to, so George Floyd. George Floyd, as well as few years back, so even few black people been targeted by the, you know, like white people, white policemen. So this created a lot of, you know, like, so tension in the community regarding the racism. You know, students, I always remember, in USA, this kind of racism problem, it was imbibed in the society. Actually, against the racism problem in USA, Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. He made civil rights movement, and during this London Johnson time, during his time, these civil rights movements were recognized, and the Civil Rights Act was made in 1964. Now let us discuss further detail. So the context is students. The context is, you know, like the J George Floyd. So George Floyd has been killed by the police due to this chokehold as well as few years back Rashad Brooks Rashad Brooks as well he been killed by the police officer so these times even I mean previous time you know like black people used to protest against the you know like racial discrimination this time even the white people even the white people as well they joined to this black people protest and what they are you know like they, they are demanding they are demanding about police reforms, police reforms in USA. First, you have to understand why the re reforms are required. You know, students, with respect to black people, there are, you know, like problems like gunshots by the policemen, as well as random checks by the police people in black people houses, as well as, so this kind of racial bias has been there in USA against the black people. Now, in this context, we will discuss about what the Lyndon B. Johnson has done. 
why we are discussing now about the Lyndon B. Johnson. The first thing is, he was the USA 36th president, friends. He was the US 36th president. And he was a person from the government side, played a very important role in passing Civil Rights you know, like Act 1964. From people's point of view, you know, like Martin Luther King Jr., he spearheaded the movement. He spearheaded the movement. And one more thing, he was believed, Martin Luther King, he was believed in the goodwill hunting. Goodwill hunting. That means, so people, I mean, the governments, as well as the white people, their will, their heart should be change. So, he was more towards that kind of thing. Whereas, Lyndon B. Johnson, he was more towards the law. Okay. Once we change the law, automatically people, hearts will change. That is what he believed in and that prompted him to negotiate with his political rivalries and finally he able to, you know, like make sure the Civil Rights Act was passed in the American, you know, like assembly, American Congress. Now, listen students, since 1980, the, the ones, the racial discrimination, racial killings, popularly noticed were around 18 killings were happened from 1990. Even the National Registry of Exonerations, that means, so white people who are committing the crime against these black people, if you see between 2008 to 2018, the cases, the cases against the police people, they are being, most of the times, the police are, they are released as acquitted persons. That means, so they were unable to show proper evidences against the police people and even the law enforcing agencies as well, they are unable to take strict action, strict disciplinary action against the police people. That means they were exonerating very high in number. And even the problem with USA is, in USA, the police training on average is around 19 weeks, just 19 weeks, the training. That means around four months. It is very less in compared to you know, like countries like European standards. According to 2015 report of the US Justice Department, it concluded that, so, this, the incidents associated with police, violent incidents associated with police, they are rise in number. In the same way, the officers are not receiving the regular and consistent departmental training. So, all these are pointing towards, watch, all these are pointing towards administrative reforms. Administrative reforms long overdue. Now, so the every aspect of the police training, recruitment procedure and the funding, accountability, they need to be transferred in this so context. Now finally, we can summarize this is rather than rather than completely believing in the principles of Martin Luther King like goodwill hunting, like Lyndon B. Johnson, how he approached, so negotiating with political rivalry and bringing the law. So only a new law can change the heart of the people rather than we entirely depend on the so good nature of the people. So it's not going to be workable because it was tried by Barack Obama previously. So this is the article is about. Next one students. Next one is related to governance thing. So in your syllabus point of view, this is related to GS paper to governance. And what this is saying that during the time of pandemics, during the time of crisis kind of thing, so right to information act should be you know like enforced very strictly because in this pandemic especially during the time of covid 19 this right to information act enforcement was not very good so now what we are going to discuss first we will see what this article is trying to convey to us so this article is saying that there are justifications for not giving information during the pandemic but pandemic is a time is a is the time where you know like people are informed rightly and people should get right information promptly so in the time of disastrous time pandemic time so right information should be conveyed to the people that right information will help to the people in taking so right action that that it would like to convey this article is about then we'll discuss what is the context why we are discussing now the context is students listen i think you heard about the pm cares fund PM CARES Fund. You know students, there are reports suggested that around $1 billion been donated to PM CARES Fund 
both from domestic contributions as well as foreign contributions as well. However, the in information was completely out of the public scrutiny. That means there was no information existed on any website. That means who given what kind of contribution and that money has been spent on which area. The, that kind of transparency is not there. And even the RTA applications seeking information about the PM Cares Fund, they have been rejected as well. That is about the context. Now, overall, we have to discuss about what is the importance of information during the time of pandemic. We will see. You know, students, people can request information up to a certain extent from public authorities by using the Right to Information Act 2000. You know the students. It is a weapon available with the citizens to get information from the public authorities. Now, it is obligation of public authorities. That means it is the responsibility of public authorities to give the requested information according to section 4 of the Right to Information Act. Now, if the information is given to the people, then they will come to know how much extent the government is helping to them. By that way, their morale levels will be improved. In the same way, for example, if people know the information, I will give an example. There is a ration shop near, near to you, PDS shop. So if you don't know how much food grains allocated in the shop, then there may be a case that the shop owner, he may say that there are no proper food grains and we are closing. He may give that kind of information. But if there is availability of information about how much quantity of food grains supplied to the fair price shop, then beneficiaries can question, you know, like why they are closing down, why they were running out of the so food grains, even though the offload is very less, offtake is very less. So I hope you understood. Information is critical in terms of even the pandemics as well. Even during the time of COVID-19, so there are different speculations about the importing, importing of Chinese kits, importing of, you know, like RT-PCR, RT-PCR kits from China and certain hospitals, especially pregnant women, after they consulting into the hospital, they stay, they saying that we are not, you know, like, uh, we are not taking the pregnant women, like this kind of problems caused to the people. If people, if a government or people, uh, the hospitals, if already they given a list of hospital information like which hospitals are taking care about the pregnant women, all this kind of information if available, then people will not suffer. So, what is the role of this state information commissions as well as central information commissions? You know students, out of the 29 information commissions, I mean located in the states as well as in central level as well, they did not conducted even a single hearing during the first three stages of the lockdown. That means they were completely shut down. So if you have any problem with RTA application, if you did not get any information, you, you don't have any choice to go to the information commission because they were completely shut down. After the third stage of the lockdown, Central Information Commission and some state information commissions, they conducted certain audio and video conferences and they disposed some kid cases. But they did not given any priority for the, you know, like urgent cases. That means most of the people who are facing problems in this pandemic time, their problems unheard. And there was a reasonable delay as well regarding the, you know, like judgments given by this or orders given by this information commissions. So this is the situation. Now what we have to understand is during the time of crisis time, so the information which can be useful to the public that information should be available all the time in public domain that will make sure that will decrease the anxiety and stress level among the people that is very very important in this context let us see about how the right to information act was evolved over the period of time you know students supreme court in mr kulwal versus jaipur municipal corporation case 1986 so it says that so this right to information act is a part of article 19 that means right to freedom of speech and expression. You know students, a person, once a person is accessible to the right information, then only he can express his thoughts. So it becomes a part of Article 19. Later, this Right to Information Act was made in the year of 2005. Now, in the following slide, we can see some basic information about the Right to Information Act. 
Now, right to information act is an intrinsic part of both Article 19 as well as Article 21. So, can an NRI can seek the information under RTI? So, you know, students, according to the Section 3, any citizen of India can seek the information from the government public authorities under Article, I mean, under RTI 2005. NRIs too can file RTI application seeking information by paying the fees of 10 rupees. So, this is about some brief information about this RTA Act. Now, so we are discussing about RTA applications with relevant to PM Cares Fund. Let us see some basic information regarding the PM Cares Fund as well. You know students, this PM Cares Fund, it was established in 2020, especially in this COVID-19 outbreak time. This will be managed by, that means, ex-officio chairman. The ex-officio chairman, ex-officio chairman is, you know, like prime minister. That means because if someone is a prime minister, then he will be automatically the ex-officio member of the chairman of this, you know, like PM Cares Fund. Then, so this, it can take voluntary contribution from both individuals as well as organizations as well. And generally, foreign contributions, foreign contributions into India, they are regulated by FCRA, Foreign Contribution Regulatory Regulation Act. Now, this FCRA will not applicable in case of PM Cares Fund. That means foreign organizations, they can easily donate their money to this PM Cares Fund. And in the same way, in India, Indian taxpayers, if they are donating this money to PM Cares Fund, so they will qualify for the tax exemption under Section 80G as well. 100% tax exemption will be given. Even Indian companies, which are giving the money to this PM Cares Fund, that money they can show as a part of corporate social responsibility as well. The PM Cares Fund will be audited by the independent authorities. So this is about the role of information in the crucial time as well as information about Right to Information Act and PM Cares Fund. Then we can we, we are going to discuss about the border disputes between India and neighborhood relations, especially in the present context of India-China, India-Nepal tensions. Now here the this article is about what is the role, what is the role of, you know, like diplomacy, especially in sorting out the border tensions. Now, already we discussed about the Nepal border issue in depth in previously. So, I assume before you listen this article, you know that with Nepal we had border issue with three places. Okay, Kalapani, Limpiadura and Lipu Lake. Three places we have so problem with Nepal. Now, without going into further that details, first we will see what this article try to say. So, in brief, we will discuss about. So, this article, you know, students, this article would like to convey to the, convey to us, what is this? India and Nepal should rely on, you know, like these diplomatic channels. By that way, we can clear whatever the apprehensions, doubts, or which were left by this colonial time. So we can we can go back to our historical facts and we can arrange some diplomatic summits through this. We can clear the apprehensions from each side and we can instill the confidence in our neighborhood countries based on that our relations will be improved. If you go to the historical facts, especially with Nepal, you know students, Treaty of Sugauri, Treaty of Sugauri, which was made in 1816. So according to this treaty, Kali River would be the natural boundary between the Nepal as well as British India Company. And in 1817, so Nepal made a representation to the British India. What is the representation? The areas which are the which are present on the east side of the river as well. So they belong to, they entitled to Nepal. The British Governor General at that time accepted that demand. And certain villages they transferred to Nepal. And the drainage, that means when a river flowing through certain area, that is known as drainage. The drainage of Kalapani and Lipu Lake, they were considered as completely belong to the British territory. And it was stated that, and it was stated that the Kali River will be formed between the border between the India and Nepal. This is about the historical facts. And what is this trijunction? Trijunction, you know, friends, in 1954, in 1954, there was a trade agreement was formed between the India and China, and it mentioned that Lipu Lake. Lipu Lake is one of the paths through which trade between the India and China will be conducted. A 
at that time nepal did not make any objections regarding the lipu lake pass and indian police patrolling post was established at kalapani in 1956 at that time also there was no resistance from nepal so from this understanding we can say that so all this all the places like lipu lake and limpia dura and kalapani historically they are belong to india now listen students if this kind of international border disputes will happen what is the ideal way to solve this basically borders between the nations they will be established through political agreement that means agreement between the heads of two nations and a treaty has to be interpreted with reference to the circumstances under which the treaty has made okay we can't try to interpret the treaty out of the context because out of the context it is a meaningless so regarding the sugoru treaty as well it has to be made in the context it was between the gorka kingdom and east india company in that context so in which in that context what are the places went to nepal and which places went to india we have to get to understand now you know students in the case of lipu lake kalapani and limpia dura the political agreement in 1817 that was between the east india company and you know like gorka kingdom it has to be followed and it has to be acted upon and it should not be open for challenge now because if you open this that treaty now it is like opening the pandorama box and it will cause you know like all the disputes and mutual mistrust and everything so the problem should be solved in diplomatic way by going through the historical facts and agreements our next article is going to be so regarding promote the people power against the covid 19 so fighting against the covid 19 it should not only the responsibility from government side it should be the people centric as well that means citizens should take part into fighting against the covid 19 and even the citizens also they have to you know like follow certain certain safeguards because government cannot do all the things that is what this article would like to do and this article would like to so convey that how we can use the community potential how we can use the you know like advantage of community we'll discuss first this article is about government centric model that means everything should be done by government that has certain limitations so we have to go to the people centric model so that is government centric and this is people centric model we will see students so the context is the covid 19 pandemic it is spreading from urban areas to rural areas as well but there are certain challenges regarding you know like to fight against the covid 19 that is there are different viral exposure rates in you know like in both rural as well as urban india and there were lack of you know like rt pcr test as well and out of 63 out of 83 district 63 they reveal that antibody prevalence that means you know like antibody is presenting means what antibody generally will be present in response to anti gen so when government authorities are doing this rapid antibody test according to mathematical models they are establishing that around 0.73 percentage of the population they might be infected so still we have a very good choice good opportunity to involve the community as a better strategy to fight against the covid 19 so what the people centric strategy should be first one is engaging the strength of the community resources we have to engage the community in fighting against the covid 19 so far you know like students this strength of the voluntary groups and the local bodies elected local bodies they are not used properly so we have to use best practices which were adopted in kerala and odisha where panchayats become excellent panchayat raj institution become excellent in so empowering the people as well as controlling the this covid 19 so infection in the same way in andhra pradesh they use this village and ward volunteers and in this way in this way we can involve the community and we can spread we can control the spread of this disease and we can deploy some other me- mechanisms as well for example mobilization of the ncc we can use the ncc as well so 
as a part of you know like awareness campaign in the same way we can take the help of the ngos as well so by taking this kind of civil society help we can detect the people with comorbidities comorbidities means people with bp and you know like diabetes diabetes so by recognizing these people so we can ensure these people are well protected and they will not get the disease so we can use we can do these strategies by making sure the community centric approach so what i would like to tell you is so in india a country like india where the virus pandemic is spreading very fast here entire government centric approach is not going to be helpful so the people centric strategy should be there it is very important in terms of you know like gs2 the role of ngos and self help groups and various other organization so next we are going to discuss about targeted news analysis in this first help the needy rajasthan high court tells food corporation of india so this news is students you know like all the people there i mean there are not enough people getting this food grains and both the fci and you know like and governments that means disaster management authority which is the nodal agency at this covid 19 time they should act properly that was the petition filed in the court so rajasthan high court has issued notice to the national disaster management authority ndma as well as fca to help the poor in which way by extending the maximum support for example giving food grains and you know like the daily migrant i mean daily wage earners and migrants who are not covered under the national food security act they should be given proper assistance that is what the rajasthan high court directed these agencies in this context we have to understand the background of the ndma ndma stands for national disaster management authority students ndma stands for national disaster management authority it was formed according to disaster management act 2005 okay so ndma headed by prime minister in state level state disaster management authority will be there it will be headed by respective chief minister the main aim of the ndma is to build a safer as well as disaster resilient india by taking proactive steps and technology driven and sustainable development sustainable strategies and in this article even there is a you know like mentioning about the fca as well food corporation of india you know students food corporation of india works under the department of food and public distribution and the, under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution this fca is a statutory body that means it was made by a law enacted by indian parliament and it was set up through fca act 1964 and set up in 1965 in the same year even the cacp was also established cacp stands for commission for agriculture cost and price which will you know calculate about the minimum support price i hope you know that students then we also discussed in this article about national food security act nfsa 2013 so the main aim of this act is to cover around two third of the indian population that is around 75% in rural areas and 50% in urban areas who are under the targeted public distribution system under the nfsa each beneficiary will get 5 kilo of food grains per month for rice it will be 3 3 rupees per kg and wheat 2 rupees per kg and for coarse grains for like maize and uh, ragi for this kind of coarse grains that is 1 rupee per kg this is about nfsc so in this article we discussed what rajasthan high court told that to give benefits to as many people as possible in this pandemic time and we discussed about some background information about the ndma and fca and we discussed about nfsa then we are going to discuss about gs paper 1 related culture and history of india related news this is about kamakya festival you know students kamakya festival is related to ambubachi festival and so ambu i mean kamakya temple and the temple festival is ambubachi festival it is related to the state of assam so tell me students one question to you so what are the what are these you know like bio what are the these national parks what are the important national parks present in assam try to comment it students as well as so if you remember the biosphere reserves what are what are the biosphere reserves in assam so try to comment it now this article is about 
So Ambubachi Mela, it is related to Kamakaya Temple, it is postponed. So it's the first time in last 500 years. Generally this fair, this Ambubachi Mela, it happened between the time of 21st to 25th June. So it was cancelled due to the rapid spread of this COVID infection. This temple was built in 1565 by King Nara, Nara Narayana, Nara Narayana. And it is one of the, you know, like 51 Shakti Pitas, you know, like of Lord, you know, like Lord Shiva's wife, so Parvati Devi. And this temple, you know, like this temple contains the temple sanctum sanctorium. That means the main, so main place where the God, where the God or Goddess will be portrayed there, sanctum sanctorum. It contains the yoni, the female female genital of the, you know, like Parvati Devi. So this is about Kamakya Temple and Ambubachi Mela. So this is post, this is, you know, like completely cancelled out since 1565 due to this COVID crisis. So regarding some information about this Kamakya Temple uniqueness, so it can be find, find in your handouts. Next, Japan to rename islands disputed with China. So these islands, so these islands present in, you know, students here, you can see the map. These are the islands which are in dispute with China and Japan. So now Japan, so China actually call these islands as Diao Islands, Diao Islands and Japan used to call them as Senkaku Islands. Now they changed names, we will see, you know, like what kind of names they changed. You know, students, Japan changed this Senkaku Islands. The name changed is, so, Tonoshiro, Tonoshiro Senkaku. Okay, so they added one word, that is Tonoshiro Senkaku. Here, rather than particular about the name, here what you have to understand is, when you are changing name means, what you are indicating, you are indicating that that land belongs to us. Japan want to convey that meaning, that inform, that message to China that these territories are belong to Japan. The renaming of Senkaku Islands by Japan, it ignited tensions among China and Taiwan. So because they are also claiming these, you know, like these Senkaku Islands belong to them. So actually the Senkaku Islands, these are present in the southwest of Japan and they are present in East China Sea. You know, students, China is following the expansionist policy both in South China Sea as well as East China Sea as well. We discussed like with respect to Spartley Islands, Parsil Islands, Natuna Islands, China is having problem with its neighborhood countries. Even it, you know, like, so it entered into the Taiwan airspace. It has problem with India. You know, we, we are seeing this kind of incidents. Now, actually, so till the time of, till the time of 1895, they were under the Japanese administration students, these islands. Then between 1945 to 1972, they were under the administration of USA. Again, from 1970 onwards, when USA transferred them to Japan at that time, China started claiming these islands. These islands are a part of deal between India, I mean Japan and USA. What is the name of the deal? Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security. So, because these islands are part of the deal, if, you know, like any security issue will come up regarding these islands, USA will come to the rescue of Japan. Now, these islands are presently under the control of Japan students. Next article we are going to discuss about, we can reduce the trade deficit with China by $8.4 billion. First, we have to understand what is the trade deficit and trade surplus. With any country students, with any country, if our exports are higher than our imports, then we have trade surplus with that country. Rather than that, if our exports, if our exports are less than our imports with any country, then we can say that is a trade deficit. Regarding the China, so from China we are importing around $65 billion worth imports and we are exporting only $16 billion exports, resulting into around $48 billion, $48 billion of the trade deficit we are experiencing now. Even though for last few years our exports are increased, but more than that our imports were increased. So here this report is saying that certain areas in our manufacturing sector where by encouraging our domestic industries, by encouraging our domestic competitiveness, we can substitute certain products from China by that way we can reduce 
the trade deficit with China. That is what this report is saying about students. Next is regarding the quiz. Under the Right to Information Act, who among the following can seek the information? So, first one, Indian citizen. Second one, NRI, non-resident Indian. Third one, PAO. So, person of Indian origin. Fourth, foreigners. So, try to pick the right answer. And consider the following pairs. Countries and pass which connect them. India, China. Lipu Lake Pass. India, Nepal. Banihal Pass. India, Myanmar. Nathula Pass. Pick out the right answer, students. You know, students, regarding the online batches already for 2021, prelims come mains batch has been started. If you have any queries, just you can, you know, like ring to this number, you can message to this number, you will get all the details about the batch and admission and everything. You will get it, students. So, this is about the detailed analysis of today's Hindu newspaper, students. If you understood, if you feel this article, this video helped you in your preparation, like this video, students. And if you think this helps in your friends, help to your friends as well, then share the video. If you did not subscribe to the channel, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching this video. See you in next video, friends.